Welcome! In today's Fossil in Focus video, we're taking a quick look at Sorolophus angustorostris. It's a very hard uh, species name on that one. Um, we'll just call it Sorolophus for the rest of the day. Um, this is one of our very large hadrosaurs from Mongolia. Um, it was alive during the late Cretaceous, 71 million years ago, um, and got up to sizes of, you know, being 13 meters long, weighing 11 tons. These were really, really big dinosaurs. Um, and um, they were living out and likely preyed upon uh, by Tarbosaurus batar, the big Tyrannosaurid um, theropod that was alive and found in the same unit, same place, same time. So ultimately, when we look at this skull, you might be wondering, what type of dinosaur is this? And how exactly do we know that? Um, so we've talked before about how we can classify our dinosaurs, um, and we're looking for characteristics to try to figure out uh, their evolutionary relationships to figure out which specific clades they belong to. Um, so Sorolophus is one of our Ornithischian dinosaurs, um, and the character that we look to see that is that they had a predentary. So this is the scooped shape bone down here, um, on the lower jaw, kind of at the front, and it's a single bone um, scoop shape that's attached to that lower jaw. Um, so that's the first thing that we take a look at. Uh, just by looking at this skull, we're going to look for a few more characteristics. Um, so when we look here, we can see that there are uh, a dental battery, there's a tooth row in here, and it's set inside the skull. Um, so this set, um, kind of inset tooth row, is one of the characteristics of our genosaurians. So these are our cheeked dinosaurs, um, is having those well-developed cheeks, so the muscles and the skin that would be covering over this section, um, and we need to make space for them by having those inset tooth rows. Uh, we also know that this is an ornithopod um, dinosaur, and that's because when we look, it has a diastema, a very distinct separation between the premaxilla and the maxilla. And so that's um, kind of a spacing that we see right through here. A little bit hard in this fossil, um, but it's setting apart the front um, and the back teeth, uh, if you will, even though there's no teeth up here um, on the front. It's also one of our Hadrosaurinae um, dinosaurs. So this has a crest here at the top. Um, this is a small crest and it's not hollow. So it's just a small extension of bone kind of up off the, the forehead of our dinosaur, if you will. Um, and that which uh, would be how we'd classify it. Um, now, ultimately, when we're trying to understand uh, this dinosaur fossil, there are a lot of cool things that we can see. Um, these hadrosaurs were amazing consumers of vegetation. Um, and their skulls were set up for eating and eating and eating lots of vegetation. Uh, specifically at the front, when we look at the front part of the skull, this is the cropping section. Um, so the bones over here would be covered in a keratin sheath um, and it would have this rampotheca or beak uh, attached to the front that would be used for cropping or clipping vegetation. Um, and then the tongue is sitting in this diastema, this spacing, and it would help move, kind of scoop the food back into this um, amazing set of teeth back here. This is the dental battery, which is a system of teeth that come really close together. Um, and when they close their jaws, um, this dental battery would come together at the same time and help them chew their food. Uh, the dental battery itself has at least three, but sometimes three to five replacement teeth. So they would get worn down and there would be another tooth behind it to kind of fill in the place. So they constantly have this really fantastic structure uh, for chewing up all of that fibrous plant material. They also have a very large coronoid process, which I'll try to reach here. You can kind of see it under here. This is a huge attachment point for large muscles to help open and close uh, these big jaws to help uh, consume all of that plant material. So they were the dominant herbivores at the time. They ate conifers and deciduous trees. Um, and ultimately, when their kind of teeth would move, they had this pleurokinetic skill. So they would move, the teeth would kind of grind against each other and really work to chew up that really fibrous, uh, tough plant material. Now, the last thing we'll point out is if we're wondering about this crest, you might be like, what is the point 
of having that big crest um, and ultimately it would really set them apart. Um, so it creates a visual cue for our dinosaurs so we can see that they have uh, very large um, high orbits. So they have big eyes, uh, they're able to see things um, and these crests would help them figure out you know which species is which and then within their own species they could use that to kind of signal each other say hey look at me I'm over here this would be really you know kind of a visual cue for setting yourself apart from the crowd if you're trying to kind of set up a territory um, or to find a mate. Uh, so that is likely uh, what some of these uh, crests were for. Um, and so that is our quick look at Sorolophus. I hope you enjoyed this fossil in focus video uh, and until next time I wish you adventure and happy learning.